Hello and welcome to Wheatzer's Woodshop. My name's Ted. We're gonna make some things. All right, welcome back to the shop. Uh, had some time off. Uh, sorry to my <laughs> my three fans I have out there. <laughs> Uh, had some, uh, had to take a break. Uh, let's just put it that way. Uh, did some, uh, some recalibrating. <laughs> so, but in the meantime, uh, picked up a couple of new sponsors, uh, ran into some old friends, uh, that, uh, hadn't seen in a while and are interested in what I'm doing and are helping me out. Uh, one of them is my good friend, Jeff, who owns the Whidbey Wood Woodworkers and Custom Milling Place in town. Um, you guys got to go there. Uh, it's an unbelievable place. Uh, two giant mills, um, no job too big, too small. Um, excellent, excellent uh, quality craftsmanship and slabs and live edge stuff and bar tables and our bar tops and all sorts of good things that Jeff makes. It's just fascinating to see the process go uh, from a tree to a, a, a beautiful board or a slab. So. So, and he's been teaching me a lot, and um, he is part of another project that uh, I'm in the middle of that uh, he helped sponsor with. And then um, I ran into another friend of mine, Rob, that owns uh, Island Clock and Watch Repair. As you guys know, I'm really into watches, so I've known him for the last few years, and uh, who's also really taught me a lot. But he sponsored this video today with a product that he started with a startup, um, a Kickstarter project that uh, he ended up buying this stuff through and uh, said, hey, Ted, you, you got to use this thing. So, and uh, do a report on it and, and get a, an idea if you like it, you know, you know, buy one yourself, do whatever. So, so he provided this for me. And today we're going to do an unboxing of a recon electronic measuring tool. So this is it. So as of now, all I've ever seen these done is on your uh, miter saw. And it's a gauge that it's a roller that measures. And um, you can do it in decimal form. You can do it in fractional form. You can do it in centimeters, millimeters, um, you name it. I mean, this is this is the shindig here. So we're gonna open this together and um, we'll see what this is all about. And uh, we're gonna put it to the test. I am, uh, I'm really gonna uh, not abuse this thing, but I'm going to try to find the, the flaws and the goods and, the, and you name it. So, and it's just in time because I have another big project coming up that requires mass producing a lot of stuff. So, but it's it's a secret, I can't tell you right now. So that's in the works, but this is going to benefit with that project. So we'll see what happens. So let me adjust the camera, we'll get a closer view and we'll unbox this thing together. All right, hopefully this is a good angle. So <laughs> my first unboxing with something. So, so like I said, the, the two new sponsors are Rob, from uh, Island Clock and Watch Repair, um, he uh, he said, "Hey, you got to you got to check this thing out." So he ended up investing in a bunch of these from the Kickstarter project. Now they are available on Amazon. So I'm saying I'm thinking that the Kickstarter was about a year ago, um, but since then uh, there's a few more videos on YouTube too. So <clears throat> we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, I have another application that I'd like to try this on that I have not seen anybody use yet. So we're gonna do that also. But uh, let's let's check it out. So let's figure out which way we gotta open this out here. Looks like it's, the box is pretty nice. It's not, not overly huge, but let's go from this side. Nice start from the case inside. All right, no other instructions. Nope, put that to the side. 
Let's see which. Uh, wow, this thing's this thing's really nice. Open this up from down below. Oh, there we go. Wow, look at that. So there it is. Like I said, this was the Kickstarter version of this. There, there might be a different one that's already out, but there's the plastic on the inside. There is, oh look, they send a nice sticker. That's pretty cool. And then the instructions look like they're tucked up under here. So a quick start guide, which is really good. Let's see, yeah. So this opens up nice. Of course, I didn't bring my glasses, but uh, so battery's not included. Hey, how about that? <laughs> so we'll have to get some, uh, looks like double A batteries for this one. That's, a, that's it for this. And then it has calibration. Look at all that. Zero, selecting the units. So this is really good. This is really nice. Setup diagram. And then Clamping requirements, how it works, fractional units, maintenance, safety, you bet. All right, good. Well, this is really nice, pretty legible. This is, uh, it's a little bigger than I thought it was. Ooh, boy, that rolls just buttery smooth. And the traction on this thing is off the charts. That is, that's some good stuff. So looks like it has the sticker over the screen here there's the so this comes off that's good I won't take this all the way off yet but that's probably exactly what it looks like so here is your clamping mechanism this goes on the back side of your miter saw over there and then this is clamped it clamps down and locks so that's super nice that's really strong these springs are that's a lot of force I'm putting down to get that to, to shut, so that's really good. So you know that this thing is gonna clamp really nice wherever it clamps onto. Looks like it's pretty universal, so we got uh, enough space in here to pretty much go on any miter saw. And uh, probably some other applications. Like I said, I got an idea for this thing. So what else is good about this? It's it's built nice. This is. This is that strong ABS plastic. Oh, and it, even in the, it has a battery holder for batteries and stuff in there too. So we'll get an extra set and put that, put that back in there. But just from, you know, touchy feeling, <laughs> it's, it's, it feels nice. It feels, you know, really, and then there's the, oh, there's the wheel that goes down. So, and then it's, it's very, it's stout, you know, it's very adjustable. I mean, but there's a lot of good tension on it. So when this thing, when something's being fed through there and it's taller than, you know, that that's gonna stay. So that's, that is really nice. All right, I said nice enough. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get some batteries and, um, oh, the buttons. Oh yeah, these are rubber coated. So they're probably dust proof. Um, they, obviously they'd have to be everything in here looks like it's pretty sealed up uh, battery case and stuff looks like it's pretty sealed up so I'm pretty impressed with these springs though well that's that's some that's some tension on there so all right well let's uh, let's go get some batteries and uh, we'll make this thing work okay <clears throat> got some batteries real quick let's uh, go through putting these in here so this screws out really nice. Extend this so it's out of the way. Make sure when you bring this out, don't don't allow it to snap like I just did. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, I guess. That's... So <clears throat> I guess it just, it's not good for it. So this unscrews, doesn't come out, but this flips and rotates with those two little prongs. Hopefully you can see that. And it's a positive negative, so negative or I don't know maybe you guys can see that negative positive so positive up there negative down positive. there you go and put this back in gosh I hope you guys can see all this that's going on now this is a little tougher but not difficult 
just got to use both hands and then tighten this back down. And voila, so let's take this off finally. So it's in fractional mode right now. So, all right, let's get this over on the table. So, oh, by the way, oh, I moved it. Oh, look at that. Sensitive. I think you zeroed it. Yeah, like that. So, okay, let me turn this off. Zero degrees. You hold this down. There you go. So this clicks up, and you just it clicks into place. So when you want to release the wheel, you click it again and then bring it down softly. Just don't let it snap. That's what the instructions say, but probably pretty wise because this is a pretty good precision instrument. So probably a good idea to not slam it around like that. All right, let's get this set up on the miter saw and calibrate it to a tape measure. Okay, so we're at the miter station. So this clamps onto this side of the fence. And on the bottom is a nice little, hopefully you guys can see this. There's a quick release button right there. So if you squeeze that while you clamp both together, if you're hitting that, it's not gonna lock. So if you just use your fingers on this one part here and not hit this lever, this will end up locking. So, and, that, and that's what you want. So then to unlock it, squeeze that, and then it comes back out. So there's ribs on the back of most of our saws. So you kind of want to avoid those. And there you go. It fits right in there. And then you just clamp this puppy down. Make sure you're not hitting that. And bam, look at that. Golly, that is in there. Okay, so the material's in there. And to release that, click it up and then it's down. So now one of the things I did notice that, and I don't think I have room on this table. Let me move this a little bit farther. Don't think I have the room. <laughs> yeah, this is a six foot piece. I'm already hitting the wall over there. So I gotta find a, a but you can feed this in there. And cause this goes down at an angle. Let's just put this here. Let's get a smaller piece of stock to mimic that. So you can force it to go up like that. And then you don't have to lift it up each time. Do I recommend it? I, I don't know, we'll find out. But I'm going to, most of my two by fours or stuff that size, it seemed to handle it just fine. Now this is a, this is a what, two by, two by three, two by, I can't even remember. So. But it's the only piece that I had that was six feet long, so we gotta calibrate it with that. But it looks as though, and you don't wanna, you know, like I said, don't wanna slam it down, but you can you can get it in there pretty easy and it comes back up. Now there's a lot of tension on this. But as you notice, it really it really slides nice, it grips it nice. I'm gonna move this back a little so you guys can see it a little better. There, that's better. Now we got a glare on there. All right, so we'll fix that up. Anyway, yeah, so there's your tip right there. So don't let this slam when you bring it out. But if you wanna insert a piece, you know, this, this is as big as I'm gonna probably cut, maybe a little bigger if I do some uh, dimensional wood like on the bandsaw or, you know, three, four inches thick maybe. But it just goes right in there. So that's a good thing. So the piece that we're gonna calibrate with though has to be six feet. And then that's what this piece is. So I'm gonna put that in there. We'll get that all straightened out. Now I can move this down. All right. On to the next step. We'll see if we can get rid of that glare. Okay, so now we get to calibrate it to this tape measure. So I guess that means <laughs> this is the only one I can use to measure each piece with, but you can redo this calibration if you change it 
or change what uh, tape measure you're using. So it's, it's an on-site thing. So. so we hold down both of these and click that. And it goes into calibration mode. Uh, cut the material and select the zero button. So slide the material just past the wheel. So what we want to do is square it off. Let's see what we got right there. Looks good. Let's cut that down. Then uh, move the material slightly to the right and ensure the material is stable and saw. Okay, it's hard in there, so we're good. Now, using a tape measure, make a mark at exactly the six foot mode or length. So, we will use this tape measure. All right, and this is very carefully ensuring the back of the board. Always in contact with the fence, slide the material from left to right until the left edge of the saw blade is perfectly aligned with the mark made. Okay, so move the material and then click. So, let's see, zero, boom. Move the material slide to the right, ensure the material is stable on the side. Units. Right. Looks like it's rolling really nice. So this is the calibration. So looks like it's staying right against there. There's our mark. Uh, very carefully ensuring the back of the board is always in contact. Well, I might have screwed that up because it didn't. Didn't go all the way perfect. So let's see what it does right there. There's our mark. Line that up perfectly. What does it say? Wow, we just barely got in there too. Six feet. All right, so turning the back is always within. And uh, once aligned, select the zero button to confirm the calibration. Bam. Done. There it is. Look at that. 72 inches. All right. Perfection. And then let's cut it. Let's see what happens. purposes. That's what these videos are all about. I am measuring that. Jeez, absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. I mean, I can't, there's no deviation whatsoever. You just, hopefully you can see, well, you probably can't see that that well, but my calibrated eye shows that that is exactly 72 inches. So I am impressed. So calibrated to this tape measure. So which is easy to do, because we can just keep that tape measure on there. So, click this to zero, okay, good. All right, so let's make some, uh, let's make, make some cuts. Let's see how accurate this thing is. All right, so, now it looks like um, we are going to make some cuts, but let's set up the blade thickness, and uh, we'll set it. Also, it has numerous ways to display your your, your length. So we can go fractional. Uh, where's the button here? Come on. I guess I lied. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm clicking the wrong one. We got fractional. We got inches in decimal. And in feet in decimal or fractional. Then centimeters. Then millimeters. Meters. Inches in decimal form and then back to fractional form. So we'll just keep it on the easiest one there. Now, we gotta set our blade thickness. So my blade's an eighth of an inch. So you hold down offset blade button here. And so there it is, blade. That's pretty nice. And then you rotate this. There it goes. To 
actually calibrate what this is at. And boy, it is sensitive. There's an eighth. Then when you're all done, just click enter. And then boom. So that's our offset for our blade. So that was pretty simple. Now let's see. Release arm, zero material by lightly pressing material to left of the blade. Well, I got you. So. All right, so let's do this. Release that puppy. Bring this down, run this to the blade. Just touching it. Then it says zero the material. Boom. Okay, perfect. So we're still back to eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna make three, three four inch cuts. And uh, We'll, we'll measure those right after this. Slide the materials to the desired cut location and then start cutting. Select zero button to set point negative value blade width is displayed. All right, be sure to only lightly touch the blade. This is cause deflection. Yeah, we got that. Alternately, <laughs> an initial cut may be made to remove a small amount of material in order to establish a zero position. So, release the arm. All right. So I didn't cut this end. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll put this out and then we'll cut this side. We'll square that off. We will zero that because that's a perfect cut. We will move this up against that fence. Boy, this thing's, wow, this thing really holds down tight. There we go. Hopefully, oh, see now I went too far. So we make mistakes live on TV. Look at that, bam, right there. First cut, four inch. Put that to the side, zero that out. Bring this through again, roll it through. Now I'm pushing it kind of slow because I'm a newbie. Wow. There it is right there. So you could probably push it faster, but let's check it out. Two cuts, zero, because we already cut and touched off on this side. Slide it through. Man, is it sensitive. But that wheel is really gripping that nice. There it is, four inches. One last. Now, we calibrated it to this tape measure, which is fine. And gosh, that is absolutely perfect. Let's see if we can get it over there. This was my last cut. And you can see it is right on the money. Right on the money. Oh gosh, I can't, it's hard to see. But by this tape measure, Boy, it looks weird on the film though. Way, way off. It's not off. It's right on there. So there's one. Oops. Boy, this is tough doing this one. There is two. That is, again, right on the money. And this was the first cut. And we touched off. And that is also perfect. Just perfect. So, but to even get better calibration, let's, uh, or verification that it is calibrated. Let's do the old dial verniers and see what this is actually at. It says four inches. All right, there it is. So technically we are 12 thousandths over four inches. 12 thousandths, that's pretty good. Let's measure the other side just to see what that's at. Oh, there's a burr in there. That's probably not too accurate. It says we're 20 thousandths over there, but it looks like I might have to uh, calibrate my my saw. Oh, no, there is a burr in there or a little, little piece. Let's see if I can get rid of that. No, here's some tear out. So, but let's go in the middle here. That's a little cleaner. So, and this one says we're right at about four inches, 17 thousandths. So, this one side is at 10, yeah, 10,000 is over. But the, I mean, that's ridiculously accurate. I'm, 
I'm pretty pleased with that. That's why God invented sandpaper. <laughs> okay, next test. Let's do multiple lengths. And we'll just do three, four, six. So we already touched off on this side. And this material's just been, I'll just keep this material in there. So we already touched off here, so that means we can zero out. Uh, bam. Still in an offset for our blade, if you have a thicker curve or whatever. But we know this is an eighth of an inch. So the first cut, let's do three. Uh, man, oh man. And this, this is so legible. I'm super impressed. Oh, see that X? When that X comes up, it's perfectly three inches on that dial, by this dial. So let's try three. just started wood shop class I'm holding this thing really tight against the back there it is five perfect so I don't think you have to but it's new to me so let's let's figure this last cut all right five let's get our <laughs> calibrated oh man that is absolutely perfect I mean, just perfect. That is great. Let's do four. Again, I mean, it's split the line just perfectly. And then three. And three, same thing. Just perfect. So, let's do the dial verniers just to see because thousands of an inch make a big difference. a little bit of a burr or there's some tear out on the top up there let's just get this very tip so we're at 17 thousands over on this side and we're at 17 thousand whoa that's that's pretty consistent though good grouping as they say <laughs> all right so this one is Let's see, this should be the same if it's the, let's see, ooh, this one's even more accurate. Let's get this down there a little bit. Look at that, five thousands. Man, that's really good. That's the second cut at four inches. And the other side, same thing, five thousandths of an inch. Man, that's really good. That could have just been operator error on the first, or the first one. Or like I said, this tear out in here or something. So this one is the last cut at five inches. And if I can stop shaking. So this one's a little bit over. Um, it's 40 thousandths over. So that could have been me though. Yeah, 30, 28 thousandths over on this side. So, but again, cabin tree work. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but if you're making multiple cuts, I'm really starting to enjoy this thing already. Cause if I put a part, parts list out and I don't, you know, I don't have to keep marking it and doing whatever. Um, I just feed that through and I, I can trust it. I mean, that's the whole idea, right? Uh, I'm a professional homeowner. I'm not a contractor. I shouldn't work at speed. <laughs> uh, my whole thing is safety first and then accuracy and then speed last so uh if it's accurate and i'm doing this safe i'm uh oh four three two one well look at that powers off by itself because i'm slow and i talk a lot <laughs> okay so that's it success so i'm gonna try something else let's go position this camera and 
Let's see if this works. <laughs> 